Hi, I'm Jason. Welcome to the General Public Indicators course. This course is part of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Blue Campaign, a national public awareness campaign designed to educate the public, law enforcement, and other industry partners to recognize the indicators of human trafficking and how to appropriately respond to possible cases. The course's goal is to educate members of the general public, you, to recognize and report human trafficking. By the end of this course, you will be able to define human trafficking, recognize its indicators, and report suspected human trafficking to law enforcement. Let's start by defining human trafficking. Every year, men, women, and children are exploited in every part of the world, including here in the United States. It happens everywhere across our communities, in cities, suburbs, rural towns, and tribal lands. Human trafficking is a highly profitable crime and a violation of basic human rights. Human trafficking occurs when an individual is exploited through force, fraud, or coercion for labor, services, or commercial sex acts. Force can include physical restraint, physical harm, and sexual assault. Fraud can include false promises regarding employment, wages, working conditions, love, marriage, or better life. Coercion can include threats of serious harm or abuse against the victim to include their loved ones. It can also include psychological manipulation, document confiscation, and shame or fear-inducing threats to share pictures. It is important to note that under U.S. law, causing someone under the age of 18 to engage in a commercial sex act is considered human trafficking, regardless of whether they are elements of force, fraud, or coercion. Human trafficking should not be confused with human smuggling. They are different crimes. Human trafficking is the illegal exploitation of a person. Human smuggling is the illegal movement of a person across a border. Anyone can be a victim of human trafficking. Victims can be any age, race, gender identity, sex, ethnicity, or nationality. They can come from any socioeconomic class and have any immigration status. Despite popular belief, U.S. citizens can be trafficking victims within the United States. In many cases, victims do not come forward to seek help because they are vulnerable. They could have a language barrier, a fear of law enforcement, or they may not even identify as a victim. As with victims, traffickers can be of any race, gender identity, sex, ethnicity, or nationality. They can come from any socioeconomic class and can have any immigration status. Some operate as part of a larger criminal organization. Others operate individually. A trafficker can be anyone, a victim's friend or family member, or a stranger. You are a vital partner in the fight against human trafficking. Human trafficking often occurs in the open, in your daily life, as you go to school, go to work, run errands, walk your dog, vacation, and so on, you might encounter victims and have the chance to help them. Human trafficking can take place in common industries such as domestic work with housekeepers and nannies, transportation by airline, rail, and bus, or agriculture in field and farm work. Trafficking can also appear in hotels, restaurants, beauty services, construction, landscaping, manufacturing, commercial cleaning services, fishing and mining, to name a few. In the U.S., it happens everywhere, in every state, in every territory. So, how can you recognize a victim of human trafficking? What indicators should you watch for? A great first step to help combat the crime of human trafficking is to learn its indicators. Although every situation is unique and no single indicator can prove that human trafficking is occurring, Let's go over several indicators you might encounter in your day-to-day -day life. A relationship that does not appear to be genuine, particularly between a child and a parent or guardian. Someone exhibiting signs of being harmed or deprived of food, water, sleep, medical care, other life necessities or personal possessions. A person who is not in control of their own money, personal schedule or identification or travel documents. A person or persons appearing fearful, ambivalent, compliant, or under the control of another person. 
someone making references to sexual situations or using sexual terminology beyond age-specific norms. A person with a boyfriend or girlfriend who is noticeably older and controlling. Tattoos or branding displaying the name or moniker of a trafficker, such as daddy. And a worker or workers who are unpaid or paid very little, owing a large debt and being unable to pay it. Not allowed breaks at work or are being subjected to excessively long work hours wearing inappropriate or insufficient clothing or safety gear for a job, or sleeping or living at a work site. Again, it's important to note that no single indicator can prove that human trafficking is occurring, but recognizing the indicators can help you identify possible cases. Now that you know some of the indicators of human trafficking, what do you do? if you suspect a possible case. If you observe suspected human trafficking, report it right away to the Homeland Security Investigations tip line at 1-866-347-2423. The tip line is open 24 hours a day and is toll free from the US and Canada. Additionally, if you are a victim or no one, you can get help from the National Human Trafficking Hotline by calling 1-888-373 7-888. The National Human Trafficking Hotline connects victims and survivors of sex and labor trafficking with services and support to get help and stay safe. In the case of immediate danger to any person, call 911 or contact the local authorities as soon as possible. When reporting suspected human trafficking activity, it is critical that you include as many details as possible. No detail is too small or unimportant. This might include the location and time of day of your observation, the physical appearance of the suspected victim or trafficker, including gender and clothing, your observations of the suspected victim or trafficker behavior, interactions, demeanor, and conversations, and your name and contact information, if you're comfortable providing them, in the event law enforcement has follow-up questions. You may also choose to report anonymously. To ensure the safety of the suspected victim, yourself and others, do not confront suspected traffickers or victims and refrain from drawing unnecessary attention to yourself, the suspected trafficker, or the suspected victim. You do not want to alert them to your suspicions. You might be asking yourself, what if I'm wrong? It's all right. Reporting suspected human trafficking is always the right thing to do. Your tip by itself or combined with other information, might help law enforcement build a case against a trafficker and assist a victim. Now that you know the primary indicators of human trafficking, let's see how some of these could play out in real life. We'll take a look at two scenarios, a hotel and a construction site, in which multiple indicators will be shown. Can you identify the indicators? Let's start with the hotel. As I mentioned earlier, Hotels are one of the places in which the general public may come across human trafficking. Sometimes, sex traffickers will operate out of a hotel for multiple days, having sex buyers come to the hotel for forced prostitution with the victims. Hotel guests, as they conduct their day-to-day -day comings and goings during a hotel stay, may see more than they realize. Let's take a look. Hi, may I help you? We're checking in. Is there an adult or a parent with you? No, our dad dropped us off to check in. He'll be back soon. Oh, okay. Um, what's the last name? Yeah. Williamson. Uh, Charles Williamson. I see it here. He has you checking in for him. I see two rooms for two nights. Is that correct? That's what he said. May I have an ID, please? And I'm also going to need a credit card for any incidental expenses. He gave me his card for that. Here are your room keys. The rooms are connected as your dad requested. The elevator is just behind you to your right. There is a complimentary breakfast served every morning right down here from 7 to 10 a.m. There's also a free happy hour every evening from 5 to 7 p.m. that includes snacks. 
Now, the pool is located down the hall and to your left, and the gym is across from the pool. Okay, thanks. Come on, let's go. Let's recap. There were several potential human trafficking indicators in this scene. To start, the kid's overall appearance and demeanor. They looked exhausted, potentially malnourished, disassociated, and withdrawn. Additionally, Eva has a large bruise on her arm. These can all be indicators. I'm sure you noticed that the kids didn't have a parent with them. Kids checking into a hotel without a parent is not unheard of, and the kids provide a perfectly reasonable explanation, but it is unusual and can be an indicator, particularly when the kids are repeatedly seen without a parent. What about the tattoos? It's definitely unusual to see minors with tattoos. This can also be an indicator. As you've learned, traffickers will sometimes use tattoos as a way to brand their victims, to indicate they are their property. Now that we've covered the indicators, I want to dispel a few myths and misconceptions. To start, did you notice that one of the kids was male? Sex trafficking can happen to anyone, including males. Were you surprised to see that the victims had cell phones but didn't call for help? There are many reasons why victims do not ask for help. In this case, the victims do not come forward because their trafficker has instilled psychological control and fear, and they do not identify as victims. The trafficker allows his victims to have phones so he can continue to apply his influence and control without having to physically be there. Did you notice this was a nice hotel? Trafficking does not only occur in rundown motels. It often takes place in nice hotels as well. You know, the ones with free breakfasts and happy hours and gyms and pools. And finally, did you notice the kids' clothing? Victims do not always dress in a revealing manner. In many cases, victims want to keep a low profile. Plus, they want clothes that are easy to take off so they may dress in casual or active clothing and wear little to no makeup or jewelry. Okay, that was a lot to cover from such a short scene. Let's continue with our hotel scenario. Daddy says we need to get the pictures done now. Let's go. What indicator did you see in this scene? If it was hunger, you are correct. Often trafficking victims suffer from hunger and malnourishment. This is because traffickers control every aspect of the victim's lives, including when and if they eat. Traffickers also control the victim's money, requiring them to rely on traffickers for food and essential items. Victims may not eat unless they have permission to, almost like a reward. Traffickers primarily withhold food from victims as a means of psychological manipulation, but they also do it because food costs money and they want to spend as little money as possible on their victims. This is why they book hotels with free breakfast and happy hours included. Let's keep going with our hotel scenario. Hi, Daddy. Yes, I'm taking pictures now. I know, I'm sorry. I know I was supposed to do the pictures last night, but I had three dates and I was so tired I fell asleep. I have the money for you. Yes, she's in her bikini. I'm doing her pictures next. These will look like you want. What you told me to do. I'll text them to you as soon as I'm done. Okay. When am I gonna see you? You keep sending us all these different places, but I never get to see you. I miss you. 
I know I'm helping us, but I'm tired and I want to see you. I know, we're good. I got this. I got us. Yes, I know. I love you too. In this scene, we're seeing children behave in sexually suggestive ways. This too can be an indicator. The fact that Lily is being directed to take pictures and send them to whomever's on the phone is also an indicator. Traffickers use these pictures for online sex ads to get business. In many situations, the trafficker has an intimate relationship with the victim and often tells them they have to work harder or perform certain duties in order to spend time with the trafficker. This is also another way they are able to manipulate and control without being present. Let's move on to our final hotel scene. You're going to see some hotel specific indicators play out. These are things that you may see during a hotel stay. They may not seem out of the ordinary, but they can be indicators of sex trafficking. A steady flow of different men into and out of the same hotel room or rooms can be an indicator of human trafficking. It's important to note that the buyers who purchase sex don't come from any particular social class or profession, age group. Instead, they are ordinary, everyday people. White collar and blue collar, young and old. Another indicator you may see in a hotel is frequent housekeeping visits to the same room or rooms, delivering towels, shampoos, and soap. Housekeeping. This is because victims will shower between buyers, and buyers will often shower before leaving a room. Now let's take a look at the second scenario, a construction site and see how some of the labor trafficking indicators you learned might play out in real life. This scenario takes place at a residential property that is undergoing renovations, but it could just as easily take place at a commercial building site, on a roadway, or at any location where construction is being done. Let's take a look. This may seem like a normal construction scene, but pay attention to the workers' clothes and shoes. One worker, who appears to be a teenager, is wearing gym shorts, and another is wearing worn-out dress shoes. Not really appropriate attire for construction work. Inappropriate clothing for a job can be an indicator of labor trafficking. Traffickers are usually in control of their victims' money and possessions, which limits the victims' access to appropriate clothing, like work pants, steel-toed boots, or even jackets for cold weather. Do you see the one worker's injured arm in the homemade sling? Visible injuries, and in this case, a lack of proper medical care, can also be indicators of labor trafficking. Traffic workers don't have health insurance. Traffickers have no interest in paying for doctor or hospital visits. Let's continue with the construction site scenario. <sighs> <sighs> This porch should have been done by now. Uh, Why isn't it done? Uh, stick on me, sir. I, I hurt my arm. I don't care. I told you that this porch needed to be done by yesterday. And here it is today, and it's still not done. I've got buyers coming! Uh, uh, sorry, sir. Please. Uh, I, I do my best. No, you're not. No. You're wasting my time. I get back to work. <sighs> It'd be a real shame if I had to visit your daughter and her family.
Psychological trauma, fear, and control are the keys to labor trafficking. Seeing a worker who is fearful of being abused or controlled by a superior can be an indicator. Imagine you live near this house and pass by it on a regular basis. Maybe as you're headed to and from work or walking your dog. Over time, you notice the workers always seem to be there, no matter what time of day. You see them in the early morning. You see them during the day. And you even see them late in the evening. In fact, they almost seem to be living there. That's because they may well be. Often, traffickers force their victims to work excessively long work hours, so much so that victims may be compelled to live at the job site, often in unsanitary and unsafe conditions. Seeing laborers who work around the clock, take few breaks, or who, in some cases, do not leave the job site, can all be indicators of labor trafficking. Situations like the scenarios you just saw happen every day. As you go about your normal routines, you can help victims by noticing the indicators and reporting suspected human trafficking. Thank you for completing the Department of Homeland Security's General Public Indicators course. You are now able to define human trafficking, recognize its indicators, and report suspected human trafficking to law enforcement. With your help, we can all make a difference.